we would like to start today's video with a big thank you to our very generous patrons. We would especially like to thank one of our most recent patrons, Commander M. Graham. Thank you so much for your support and for all the hard work you do over at AXI. It is a huge compliment to receive backing from someone we respect and admire so much, and who is a cornerstone of the AX community as a whole. We will continue to do our part to promote AX and Elite and the AXI with pride. Again, Commander Engram, we thank you. This video was requested by Commander Chabawaki over at Patreon and is a follow on to the cold orbiting guide in our tutorials playlist. In this video, we will walk through establishing a basic and easy to control orbit, describing the control inputs needed and showing my axis control on screen with an overlay. On the left side of the screen, you will see your thruster inputs forward, backwards and lateral thrust, and vertical thrust as a separate indicator. On the right of the screen you will see rotational inputs, pitch and yaw, with roll as a separate indicator. The stick I am using is a VKB Gladiator NXT standard, with roll assigned to the twist axis of the stick. I find that in flight assist off, for me, having yaw assigned to the stick X axis helps with fast and accurate aim adjustments. The throttle is a Thrustmaster TCWS. I am using the mini analog stick on the back for forward and lateral thrust, and the paddles for vertical thrust. I find this arrangement helps with the down thrust aspect, as a paddle can be held with little additional cognitive load. I also had to use OBS instead of Shadowplay to record this, as Shadowplay does not support multiple input sources needed to display the overlay. As a result, the quality is a little lower than usual in terms of image quality. For this session, I am using the Viper Mark IV because it is an excellent small ship for orbiting. It feels like it was actually made with flight assist off in mind. And it's one of the few ships I still have flak fitted to uh, on a regular basis. The first order of business is to aggro the Thargoid and then boost away in order to prepare for the swarm. For the simple kind of orbit we are learning today, once the swarm has been eliminated, apply left thrust to bring your ship around the side of the Thargoid, adding forward thrust to close the range, and then adding continuous downward thrust as you get close to the 3 km range. This will start your orbit. You may now use lateral thrust to control your position relative to the Thargoid and forward or backward thrust to control range. And as you see I'm using a bit of forward thrust as well just to maintain the distance because if I don't, if you don't do that, if I just hold down you can see the distance is starting to grow. So you've got to use forward thrust to maintain the range. You should use lateral thrust to maintain pace with the Thargoid along its vector. but you can manipulate the Thargoid's behaviour to a degree by using more thrust on one side than the other. Thrusting against the Thargoid's direction of travel will slow the Thargoid and your ship down. This does mean the Thargoid will manoeuvre around more, but it will keep your ship within the optimal zone on the throttle. This can be very important for ships that suffer a penalty to their aiming mobility outside of the optimal throttle speed. When thrusting in the same direction as the Thargoid's direction of travel, the Thargoid is constantly trying to keep up with you, and so its forward momentum is preserved. This gives it less opportunity to manoeuvre evasively, but does most likely mean your ship is outside the optimal zone on the throttle. In order to ensure your orbital trajectory will not decay, 
or harmonize with the Thargoid's direction of travel, it is important to orbit around the Thargoid's vector. The simplest way to visualize this is to take note of the Thargoid's trail. Ideally, you would like the trail to be horizontal across your screen with your ship orbiting downwards. As the Thargoid changes direction, simply roll the ship and continue downward thrust using forward thrust to close the range again to maintain your orbit for as long as needed. It doesn't have to be perfect. Um, you will fall out of sync sometimes, but so long as you can re-establish that uh, position where you're thrusting down, the trail is moving in a line across the screen and you're rolling to maintain uh, the same orientation relative to the Thargoid, um, you will image successful. We are now going to run through an example fight, putting together all of the information we've just covered and from the previous orbiting video covering the theory side. I will be explaining everything that is happening as it happens as the audio was recorded during the fight itself. And we're going to aggro the Goid. And I'm going to boost away. Get ready to deal with the swarm. Okay, so this one has been eliminated, as I said, we're gonna just uh, thrust out to the side like so. Get into a good position, start our downward thrust and use lateral to equalize our momentum with the goid. Use heat sink. Pips in the right position. Start engaging. Remember to use forward and backwards to control your range. Lateral thrust to maintain your momentum with the thargoid down with thrust to maintain the orbit. Then it boosts away. Now we have a new swarm. Now when you're starting out you do want to boost away a bit just to get the swarm to be in a straight line behind you. If your velocity away from the swarm it's more or less in line with the swarm's position from you. It'll be a lot easier to hit the swarm with flak. And a good rule of thumb with the swarm is just aim halfway between the indicator and the swarm itself. And generally you'll hit the swarm. Should get some sun and running here it's just to Build up some distance again by flying by the goid. This is really useful in Basilisk quites by the way with certain ships is to just use a flyby to gain range. Wouldn't have needed to in this ship because it is faster than the Cyclops but just thought I'd demonstrate that. Okay so again we're just going to thrust out to the side. Put it down with thrust to start that direction. Forward. When we get into range, we use lateral thrust to equalize with the Thargoid. And use a heat sink, and we are now attacking. Rolling as the Thargoid vector changes. Using backwards to stop us getting too close. And we have another heart. Thargoid shields deploy after uh, a heart is destroyed. Ge a general rule to follow is that the shield will be up for two minutes for a Cyclops, three for Basilisk, four for Medusa, and five for Hydra. Um, so you can just take a look at the clock at the top corner and um, when you take out a heart. So we know that in about, in about 44 minutes um, pass, that shield will go down. 
Uh, you can obviously speed up the shield by shooting at it or ramming the Thargoid, but the Cyclops, there's really no point. It'll be done by the time we deal with the swarm normally. Um, let's go and eliminate that swarm. I always check the uh, range indicator down here in the bottom corner when I can't see the Thargoid uh, when it's behind me, for example. Or if I hear it, if I can hear it, it's kind of, you know, general noise, so I'll use silent running just to kind of make sure that I don't fall within range. Okay. So we know that the shield is down. So let's go ahead, start our maneuver. Same as same as always, we're gonna just go to the side. Start downward thrust, use forwards to close that range, lateral to equalize momentum, heat sink, and attack. Rolling to match the Thargoid's vector. Third heart, obviously, is the one where if you if you are not cold when on the Cyclops, this is um, if you're not cold when the heart goes down, you want to use silent running to avoid triggering the shutdown field energy surge, if you will. Um, but provided we stay out of range now until it stops glowing red like that, then we will. There we go. We've bypassed that all together. We use downward thrust, heat sink, start firing. Oh, shield is gone. If there was a shield, we'd have to see the little blue impact indicators in the uh, target uh, spot there. So we won't be able to eliminate it just yet. Let's wait for another shield and another swarm. So, final, final for the final time. I'm just gonna thrust out to the side. Like so, use lateral thrust to bring our motion in. Start downward thrust for a little bit. Use a heat sink. Um, but there we go. There's one dead targoid. So there we go guys, that is a practical demonstration of the orbit mechanics with a very simple uh, orbit. Uh, obviously there are more complexities to orbit techniques, they get more advanced, things like boost orbiting, but we can look at those in a future video. I think I will do a video on boost orbiting. I'm also going to do a video on how I learned flight assist off because I don't necessarily think the guides that are available are the best resources um, for purely combat flight assist off. And also, let me know if you'd like to see walkthroughs on other Thargoid types as well. Uh, you know, Basilisk, Medusa, Hydra. Because I could do a play by play walkthrough with the overlays of those fights as well. So, thanks for watching, guys. I hope you found this helpful. And as always, glory to mankind.